Hello and welcome back to the homestead. I'm welcome. Dale. I'm Lisa. And this is the Nine Acre Family Farm. So we're going to come out and do our chores and bring you along so that you can see what we do on a daily basis. So we have a English coon hound and a English pointer that we have to take care of and the English coon hounds the one you always hear in the background of the videos. That's Al. He's our English coon hound. And yes, we hunt with him, so he's not always on the chain. He gets out quite often with rooster and goes coon hunting at night. He does. And then this is Kibble. And Kibble is really, really old. She was new to the homestead last year. She's a bird hunting dog. We hunt quail and pheasant with her. And um, you would think when we turn her loose that she's really, really young. She's very energetic. Here you go, Kibble. Her water's fine, but we'll have to get him some water. Let's Might go, as well check the quail while let's we're here. go check on the quail while we're here. His water's good too for now. Yep. Wait until you see the quail. So the quail have flat grown up. They've got big and in fact They've got big enough. We'll look and see if they've left us anything here. Look out, guys. Look out. Oh, I see some eggs. They've started laying eggs for us. So, we've got our had a feather. Got our quail eggs. Like I said, they just kind of drop them wherever they're at. We find them over here with the food and water. We find them back here. But we have noticed if we put the dust bath back in this darker area, a lot of them are laying back in here. Um, their feed and water, and I'm going to have to bring them some water. I'm going to make them go ahead and eat the rest of that feed. We keep their feed right here in this container. It's waterproof and everything. We do feed them a game bird feed. Um, and we noticed that when we started feeding game bird feed, they did get a lot bigger. There was that quail rooster crow that I said. Doesn't sound like a regular crow, does it? Um, but their egg production has went up way more when we started feeding that feed. Tremendously. It is an organic, um, game bird feed. It's over 30% protein. So we'll bring them back some water here when I'm carrying water around to everybody. Let's go check on the meat birds. Guys. Look how much these birds have grown. They're getting huge. They're getting huge. So our chicken tractor, like we, we showed you, we got them out here. We're moving them in the backyard. We put our, our little prop boards in here. I always take their water and move it around. Get down. Clean it up. 
and we'll go ahead and fill it up for them. So we're going to move them again. There's not much grass right now. We are in the brown season. We're kind of drought right now. Yeah. And there's no more grass to move them this way, so we're actually going to move them over to the side a where there's there. some green grass growing. A little bit of green left so that maybe they can get some good out of it. Okay, you go your way for first. So we watch and make sure that we don't get any of them's legs or anything like that. We actually, it seems like every year you have one that he just doesn't learn to move out of the way or it doesn't learn. And we already had one of those. So he's got a little sore foot right now. But so I'll move mine. I kind of bounce it a couple times so they know it's moving. And if you'll notice, they all come running. Okay, guys, we're going this way. Now Lisa will move her end a little bit. Get up, you lazy bum. You want me to go farther? Yep. Nope, I gotta. There we go. A little bit more. He's right there. Guys, look at them going to town on the grass. We moved over to the green and they're already eating away. So now that we've moved it, now we'll do the rest of the chore with it. I'm uh, filling up their little self feeder right now. I'm going to go ahead and get their water filled up. Wash it off. And we do pour some feed into the little trough down here because they do like eating out of that. They actually prefer to eat out of that over the self feeder. So, guys, if your water hose has been laying out in the hot sun, always run it for a little bit and let it cool down. Yep. And then these ladies, they love to come and clean up after we move the babies and you'll notice that um, our little gray Joe B isn't around now well he got mean and killed a rooster so we had to get rid of him but we still have Benny the guinea right there Benny's still here Benny's not quite so talkative and crazy no he's not it was a scorcher today it was like what was it? Uh, 103? Yeah, it was 103 like degrees today, so. But it's almost 8 o'clock now and it has cooled off nicely. I can't wait until Thursday, though. It's supposed to be down in the 80s. Come here, guys. Here's your water. 
So for the meat birds, actually we're done doing chore with them now. They've been fed, they've got fresh water. They've fresh been grass. moved on to green grass. So we can actually go ahead and shut up the chicken tractor. And uh, when it comes nighttime, they will go to bed. Okay, so next we need to fill some water. We'll go to the hen den and check their feed and water. And I'm pretty sure they probably need feed from the morning chores. So we'll take a small bucket of feed out there. Go ahead and put in their feeder off. Lisa was talking, was talking about the feed and how she feeds. We have a lot of these locking type buckets from all the years of doing show animals show feed comes in them so we store the feed in those and those buckets travel with the chicken tractor as it goes so we always have feed right there close it's pretty easy to two buckets hold exactly a 50 pound bag so you know the 50 pound bags moving with them okay so our hen feed we store inside of here is it dark you can see. So we use trash cans to store the feed. Ooh, we need to get some more chicken scratch. We got to get more scratch grain. And a little bit more. So we don't get one without getting the other. We mix our feed. We mix scratch an egg layer half and half for our feed. It helps cheapen up our feed bill. We didn't see much slowdown on egg production when we did that. And the hens really like the scratch mixed in with it. So we got a bucket. This helps keep the mice out and the varmints. These do, of course. I guess if a coon really wanted to get in there, it could, but I'm gonna assume that they're not quite intelligent enough to do that. But until we get proved wrong, that's our storage. Plus it's in a locked barn. There it is, the hen den. The hen den is actually not very far away from the house, and that was intentional because when we kept them in there, it was awful nice to uh, walk out the door, get eggs, and take care of them, plus keep an eye on them. And when we leave in the morning, just stop. If we want to let them out, just stop and let them out, which we've been doing lately, obviously. So we have a self feeder in here if they want to eat out of it. Here they come. And then we have a five gallon water bucket. So another source of water. We have waterers out everywhere for the chickens. So this small coop here, we we used to always use this small coop for our AM Samani chickens, the special breed, the black chickens. We have kind of quit breeding AM Samani. Um, we're selling so many eggs and everything. We're using those eggs for um, retail at the farmer's market. And our rooster is not good enough quality for us to 
feel confident uh, putting that product out saying that they're 100 percent pure he has a little mulberry in his wattles and in his comb and um, i'm just not going to sell sell a bunch of am samani chicks claiming that they're pure when i see that bleeding come out in him so i'm actually in the market for a new am samani rooster And this coop, they always want to fill their waterer full of the dirt that they scratch up. So I usually, while I'm filling it, I make sure and spill a little extra so I can rinse it out. If your water is setting at an angle, always make sure you point the outlet from your water at that angle. Because it'll fill up to it and it won't drain it dry. Pour a little feed in there for that. I doubt there's going to be any eggs in here. We checked eggs this morning. But let's just check and see. Oh, Agatha had got moved over here. Easy, Agatha. That's what I thought. No eggs. And for some reason, we moved Agatha. And she's not near as mean. She's still kind of broody acting. Um, but she's not near as mean as what she was. And then the last coop we have is the hoop coop. Their water is good. rinse it out a little bit they could use some feed so I'll put some food in here for we noticed when we turned the hens back out loose again um, to free range during the day our feed bill is almost cut in half And we have eggs. Look out, girls. Winter, winter, liquid chicken dinner. Lisa been doing while I've been doing these chores. She's watering our raised bed gardens. Let's go over there and check out them. We haven't gave you a garden update lately. So, Lisa, yeah, how's your raised bed gardens doing? Well, since they only got watered once a week last week because we were gone from morning to night at fair, it's kind of sad. It's kind of suffering. But uh, and then we had the squash beetles. Yes. Come and attacked us. They ate so our. We did have two great big zucchini plants. One yeah. right here. One right here, and we got lots of zucchinis, yep. but the plants are now no longer with us. 
Yeah. Excuse me. Was I talking when you two were talking? I'm sorry. You can't get a word in with those two guys. They're just continuously crowing and trying to talk back at us. See? Anyway, so a little garden update. Of course, this is our raised bed, kitchen garden. We had zucchini here. We've got a small tomato here that someone actually gave us and we planted it in this pot. It's starting to grow pretty yeah. good and actually starting to put on a few tomatoes. Um, like I said, we had zucchinis here. We've already pulled the plants. We're gonna plant green beans, a second batch of green beans in those. This, um, this is another one of those tomatoes yeah. that someone gave us. The chickens have been pecking it. The chickens have been pecking it, but it's starting to reach to the top of our cage. And while we we'll were We'll come gone, over here. So like I said, here's Nana's to big tomato plant. We did have really good kale right here that we kept selling at the farmer's market. But while we were at fair, the hens decided they wanted to dirt bath in it. Yeah. So the kale don't look so great now. And then we got some marigolds. We planted marigolds and um, it took them so long to come up. They're just now getting to the point that they're about ready to bloom. But we haven't seen any uh, tomato worms yet. No, knock so on wood. We haven't seen any. Maybe they're doing their job. So we'll continue on, like I say, the beautiful trellis that we built for Nana. Um, complete pun intended. So we've Ooh. got lots of good tomatoes here um, and those tomato plants. We have some type of pepper planted in this pot. It was given to us too. It was so. given to us also. And this side we had cucumbers growing on this side of this trellis. And we had cucumbers over here. And what do we have now? We have uh, dead limbs. Dead. It's dead. Um, when the squash bug started attacking our zucchinis, they also attacked this cucumber plant. So we're pretty much to the point we're going to cut it out. it out of there, throw it to the pigs, see if they want to eat any of it. And we're going to replant something else there. This one's plumb full of blooms. Yeah, I think that one might thrive for a little bit. But this, they're so bl these bitter. These cucumbers have been very pol prolific. They're a pickling style cucumber. They're really dark green. So we did have carrots planted here also. And last week the chickens decided that that's another good place to dirt bath. And they've about killed all of our carrots out. This side is pole beans and we planted a lot of green beans but we never planted pole beans and we wanted to try them and we're starting to get all kinds of growth we're starting to get some blooms but we've yet to pick a green bean off of it this is some more peppers that we planted that was given to us we have cabbage over here in this um, doing pretty good pot and it's doing pretty good actually we may harvest that one pretty soon because we love cooked cabbage I thought I would try something and I planted a not a pinot pepper in with the cabbage and the cabbage does not like it and it does not like cabbage I think because you have to water the cabbage so much and the not a pinot doesn't like water so here we had a zucchini plant that was huge. We picked, I couldn't count how many zucchinis, probably 20 plus zucchinis off of this. Retailed them at the market. Squash bug got it. Um, we continued picking until the plant just finally died. End of life cycle or squash bugs, whichever one you want to say. We pulled it, gave it to the pigs. They loved it. I worked the ground back up gave the ground a little bit of fish emulsion and we planted eggplant in here and it's starting to thrive. In this pot in this right pot. here we have 
some more hot peppers, some serranos. So there's only one place left that we haven't talked about on the chores for the animals, and that's with the pigs. And you guys are going to be surprised how much these pigs have grown. Um, I locked them back up in here again. I'd let them out, let them graze a patch, and uh, I want to do a, a little sorting and working with them. So I locked them back up in this pen. I'm going to sort them back into the trailer. And then we have one that's getting ready to go to uh, freezer camp. But let me turn you around. And Mama loves giving them a shower. They love their showers. So we come out once a day and we wet them down. But this guy here, he's big. Some of these girls here, they're real big. Yep, they're getting big. They're flat growing. They do have a waller over here over here to the side and they the real hot days they either spend in there or in their barn um i say i've had them here for a week or so two weeks i guess i've had them here for about two weeks since we moved them back up here because i wanted to sort them out and see which one was big enough to go ahead and send a freezer camp oh that's good she loves drinking from the hose. We're so glad you had time to come by the nine acres and visit with us. Hey, thank you so much for everything that you do to help us grow our channel. If you really like what you're seeing, please subscribe. Hit the notification bell. And give us, and a, give thumbs us a thumbs up. up. From our family to yours, God bless you. We love you. And have a great have day. Have a great day.